Hey guys, welcome back to the CNSL Season 7. Today we are going to be going through Group D in the round of 32. This group is comprised of Yoon, Xuan Xuan, Paralyze, and Haya. A quick overview of these players. Yoon is uh, an ACS champion. Really strong up-and-coming Zergs. One of the most important up-and-coming Zergs in the scene. Expect great things from him. He is really good right now. We have Xuan Xuan, who is a Chinese Terran player. Uh, when I first saw Xuan Xuan games, like every single game was just an all-in. Uh, since then, he has expanded his play a bit. He definitely plays more macro games nowadays than he used to. He is a pretty good, pretty solid Terran. I do not expect him to get out of this group personally. Like I do, I would be very surprised if he makes it through here. Uh, then we have, and, and in fact, just to, to underline this, I'm not, there's like one other player in the tournament that I don't know, so I don't know how good he is. But I, in my opinion, Tron Tron might be the weakest player. Uh, in the tournament. So, I, I I mean, I hope to see good things. I really do. Uh, and then we have Paralyze, the Afro Toss, as people may remember from SK Telecom. He's in really good shape right now. I want, I think he's going to get out of the group. Then we have Haya, very famous old school Terran player, has taught a lot of people uh, about the intricacies of Brood War. For me personally, I look at this, I think Yoon and Paralyze are the favorites, but we'll see how that goes. And we're going to start right now. Up first, we have Yoon here in the bottom left of Radeon, and he's going to be going up against Xuan Xuan in the bottom right. Uh, let's keep an eye on Xuan Xuan because I think he might do something cheesy. Yoon, I wouldn't be surprised if he does overpool or something. Uh, the thing is, like, I think that mostly everybody up at the top kind of knows who each other are because you hit each other a lot on the ladder, right? So I would imagine that Yoon has played Xuan Xuan before and probably knows what he errs towards in this in this matchup uh like when i've seen Xuan Xuan play it's been like a lot of like eight racks or double eight rocks type things um just very very kind of cheesy aggressive but again like i mentioned before he has pulled that back a little bit he does play more macro games uh than he used to and in fact this is a depot first so it looks like he just wants to do a walled expansion and that you know, that's just completely normal, completely solid. So we can't really say anything uh, negative about about that as far as rushing goes. But that does make me fear for him against such a strong player as Yoon. You know, Yoon is, yeah, like, yeah, like I said before, he's just, he's really, really, really strong. This is the type of player where, you know, it's sad Soma went to the army, but maybe he could be like the next Soma-esque player. And he does do the overpool. So, you know, as I expected, he like, this is... It's become a little bit more common in this matchup, but it's especially good if you're playing against someone you think might go for like an eight barracks or a double eight barracks, uh, right? A BBS. And so he he plays this kind of like in a very safe way. Can't, you know, can't really say uh, too much more about it than that. Oh, this is actually, it looks like, I think he's, is he going to make a second depot here? I do not like this wall. This is an ugly, ugly, hideous wall. Uh... <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe I'm off. Maybe he lifts the sauce and puts it there. Like the barracks next to the depot here is pretty solid. Gives you two holes. If you put a depot here, it leaves like the tiniest hole for when you move it later, and then another tiny hole. And it's hard to kill eggs with marines. So like, just not a not a huge fan of that play. If that's going to be the case. Uh, now he gets up here and sees that it is a pool first, so he might start his second depot first. No, it looks like he wants that command center no matter what. Oh no, he does start the second depot. Okay, okay. Uh, and he does do that. Wow. Yeah, not a fan. Not a fan of, of the look of that. Uh, we'll see if that actually ends up hurting him later on. It just, it, it slows down unit movement. It's just, imagine getting two groups of Marines and a group of medics through here. Right? Like, I guess if you kill this egg, this opening is wide enough that it's not terrible, but this is pretty bad. This is one to two Marines wide, so you're going to see a lot of bunching there. So, uh, I it feels like... The thing is, this is the only way to get a one whole wall in. So there are pluses to this. I, I want to be clear. There are pluses to this. It's just this would be such a headache in, in the mid game. I think most uh, pros would have gone one depot, one barracks and had two holes and just had good unit movement later. OK, I'll shut up about it now. Uh, the layer is a little over halfway done. SCV still alive technically, but not in a position to gain good intel here from Xuan Xuan. So he doesn't really know if there's more lings being made. There shouldn't be, though, because he's got this type of wall. Quick engineering bay on the way. 
We're going to have a very fast plus one. Not a bad choice here from Shuan Shuan. I think, in fact, it's probably one of the better choices, especially if you're playing against someone that you feel like might be better than you. Something like a very quick plus one attack into four barracks uh, could give you enough units to just catch the Zerg if they make any mistakes, right? Maybe do a big punish and win that game. Now, SCVs being pulled down just at the right time. <clears throat> Some good solid play there. Uh, hasn't started his plus one. Needs to get that started. There it is. Definitely need to get that going as quickly as possible. Those, those plus attack upgrades are <coughs> really, really long to, to make. Now, the Spire is coming up. Uh, Overlord just kind of peeking in. And... Yeah, I mean, it, this is all very, very standard stuff. I, I'm just waiting for that first group of mutas from Yoon to see what he wants to end up doing with that. And just checking around what his vision looks like. He's got decent overlords, few lings in the front still. Like, looking at this, you already know almost 100% that this is plus one. Just seeing, like, the amount of marines, they're being made pretty much nonstop out of one racks. That all points towards that build. Now, let's see if he goes up to the four barracks. Uh, one thing I've seen uh, his his countryman Mihu do occasionally is a plus one three barracks, which I actually think is a really cool build because it allows you a lot of flexibility. The plus one four racks, like all your money is being spent on Marines, whereas the plus one three racks is like, okay, that's a quick pl plus attack upgrade, which is just solid always. But you can also do something like get your factory up really quickly. So yeah, we'll we'll wait and see on that. Six mutas on the way, as well as plus one air attack here for Yoon. Getting ready for some harassment. You're going to need to make sure you have a good amount of turrets up here. Definitely needs one over in this general area. Maybe a bunker. A bunker wouldn't be too bad either. Yeah, going to utilize a missile turret and actually puts a bunker by his uh, by his barracks. This you never see at high levels. And in fact, so many people, like when I'm playing on stream or something, will suggest for me to do this. Let's see what it does for Schwan Schwan. So he makes a bunker, loads a couple Marines. These four Mutas causing a little bit of havoc. It's not the end of the world yet, but he is getting a little bit of damage. It does take two swipes to kill anything there. Loads a single Marine into that bunker. Only two turrets here. Uh-oh, Ling's coming in. Uh, not not looking too hot for Schwan Schwan right now. He's only at 30 SCVs, by the way, which is slightly below what you really want at this point. Muta's doing a great job. It looks like he may become supply blocked here, like heavily. He's not building any depots at the moment. Okay, he does start one, but he's at 44 of 36. So he needs two depots to even make one unit. Starts two depots. Pretty painful. Only a single turret down here. Yoon gonna jump on it immediately. That, that not really helping that much. Don't forget this costs two turrets. <laughs> this is this is for all the people that watch my stream in Backstreet Game. Look at, wow, it's so good, huh? It's killing it up there. Same price as two turrets. All right, so uh, the Muta's gonna rotate in. Go after the main base here once again. Gonna pick off this turret really quickly. You can see Yoon is not letting up, man. There are no brakes on this crazy train. Just rotating around, getting kills. He keeps him at 30 SCVs, which is pretty rough. You're definitely going to need some more missile turrets as well. Third base has gone up for Yoon. Hydralisk Den on the way. I think he's going to follow up with Lurkers for containment. Comes down with his Lings and Mutas and kills both these turrets. Dude, I got to tell you, this is... This is a little bit of a train wreck. Like, Yoon is really strong, like I mentioned. And and Xuan Xuan, I, I might consider the weakest player in the tournament, like I mentioned. But, like, this is... This is rough. When you're playing a game like this is tear oh man and you went into five barracks so like this is completely all in as well so i guess everything i said was basically true uh this is completely all in he'll never have a factory as soon as lurkers are out he can't do anything so and the thing is he doesn't have enough marines to actually even attack with either he's down to 26 scvs which are barely going to support the marine production very tough situation here he is getting plus one armor. I guess that's the one uh, decent thing going on here, right? He already has that plus one attack. But Yoon is just massacring at the moment.
Mm. Queen's Nest. Four uh, Hydra's coming out with that Lurker upgrade almost done. SCV count continues to get lower. It's 20 SCVs against 30 drones. This is like really, really bad, guys. He's not even really mining from his expansion. Losing units left and right. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure the rest of the games in this group are going to be better. I hope that you're not going to turn it off. <laughs> kind of a weak first game, honestly. It's like you can tell there's a huge difference. Yoon is like a 2,700 plus MMR guy. And I think that Xuan Xuan is like low S rank maybe. And a lot of it's through cheese. So I'm not, I'm not exactly sure of his level. But as you can see here, this is, uh, he's being brutally, brutally outclassed. Lurkers are on the way. I think he'll probably, like, he's gonna run into lurkers and die, or the mutas might just kill his whole army. He's got no energy on his medics. He's trying to walk out with his five barracks marines. It's, it's very, very tough. He can't even produce. You can see his production tab. He's, like, trying to refill some SCVs. Like, yeah, the... There's just nothing for him to do. He's so far behind. You see the lurkers slowly but surely moving forward. And as they try to attack, you know, the, the mutas come in and punish. Definitely need some more medics because all these medics have been at zero energy for a long time. Yoon just, just peeling them apart, man. Very, very rough. Trying to micro back right now. You can see, well, he started the factory, but you can see he can't even really produce very much during that time. 26 SCVs only. Yoon getting his full economy going. He has a defiler mount on the way. This literally, we could see a GG at any second. It would be appropriate here for Xuan Xuan. <clears throat> and... And here's the thing, guys, too. I do want to mention, Xuan Xuan is a strong player. It's just Yoon is, re like, this This tournament is some of the very best players in the world, and he's not quite quite to the level of the tournament, I think. You, you can definitely see a difference, for instance, between him and his his countryman, Mihu, right? So that's got to be it. GG. All right, on to the next game. All right, so uh, in game number two here, we have Haya. You know, this guy, uh, pretty darn popular very very old school still has good skills has been in asl but not someone that i actually ever expect to make it in when he makes it in it's very impressive uh and up in the top left it's paralyzed paralyzed i feel like is really coming into his own right now he's playing a lot of tournaments uh you know he's he's kind of all over the place he started to be fielded in the top kcm league uh you know he's he's really good he's really good and i think uh he I definitely give him an edge against Haya, especially considering the spawns, okay? We're on Radeon, which is a big four-player map with a big wide open center. It's really, like, first off, uh, most Terrans think that this map is quite hard in this matchup, uh, and, and quite hard in general, just kind of like the open layout and everything. But it's really especially hard to kill Protoss cross-spawn on any four-player map, but this map in particular, it's just so far away and there's enough room for Protoss to run around you constantly. So, uh, yeah, it, I I don't know. I We'll see, you know, maybe maybe Haya has some sort of rush build plan. Maybe he gets like a great drop off, which allows him to hit a timing attack. But I think if you play a strong macro game and just make sure you don't lose probes early on as Protoss, you have a nice advantage cross spawn here. Uh, also, you know, I have been talking about it a lot. I'm a... I really think uh, Arbiter should be coming back big, so we'll see if he does that. But Paralyze, I, I know Paralyze pretty well as I have casted a lot of his games and actually played against him a fair amount. Uh, and he does like the Speed Shuttle meta, right? Like he likes to get those Reavers out with Speed Shuttles into High Templars and that type of play, which is really never bad. We should say it that way, right? It's never bad. Uh, it's kind of a battling comp where you can harass a whole lot. So it definitely, it, it, it can super punish Terrans in the mid game uh, and get you so far ahead that you can't lose. But it is very hard to kill someone with. <laughs> Carrier and Arbiter have very direct ways to kill Terran. 
the speed shuttle, it's like you can kind of live forever against it because it's like you just kind of spread and get anti-air and lay mines and they like can't really kill you. But if they deal enough damage, they can take enough of the map that like they will eventually kill you. And then you're like, okay, well then I'm dead, right? So it's that type of thing. Anyways, looking at the builds, Haya here with a pretty quick factory. We did have a little bit of a uh, back and forth, the probe and the uh, uh, the SCV because he slowed that SCV some. Haya is gonna scout top left and he'll find him very quickly as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Looking at Paralyze's base, he's getting range and going Dragoon. This has been an interesting shift, by the way. Uh, there, like for a while there, it was extremely popular to go one Dragoon expansion. Oh, and he cancels it. He cancels it to get the Nexus. Okay, what I was going to talk about is uh, rangeless expansion with one goon is super popular right now. But recently, there's been Terrans experimenting with new builds to punish it. Like, things like an FD push are very, very strong against this because if you have like Marines and a tank and then Vultures rallying, non-range Dragoons do not deal with that well at all. Uh, and so I've seen a few Protosses start to really go range expand more recently. Here, he canceled the range. So he started range, which is fine, and then canceled to get the Nexus quicker. Looking down at Haya's base, he's not doing like any counterplay to that, okay? So it's not like a one base move that you would do to punish this. So he might want to think about making a bunker. We'll see. The Vulture runs up, sees nothing here. He knows there's a Dragoon up there. No reason to try to scoot up the ramp and maybe lose your Vulture. Looks like he actually lost his SCV microing here. Now, three Marines against a non-range Dragoon actually win with proper micro from both sides. Uh, just barely. It's like almost an exact trade. But he lost his SCV there, which means he did get a bit more damage on the Goon. The Goon isn't going to want to attack these anymore. But, you know, losing the SCV, never fun. Robotics on the way. Vulture just kind of hiding near that third base, ready to lay some mines and whatnot. He does have mines coming up. Tank coming out. Hey, he actually is going to do the one tank push. So this is very, very popular. Now, this is not a punish against the skipped range because range will be done before he gets there. But uh, this can't... It's also good against it because you don't have to get, make a bunker if they don't get range oftentimes. But what you do is you get one vulture to lay mines. And what he'll do is he'll lay like one mine here or so. Uh, and then you push across with your Marines and a tank and you rally vultures. So see, he's laying a mine. In fact, he's going to lay two. He might even lay a third now since he's been caught. And look... Oh, they actually pick that off. They pick that one off too. So none of the mines connecting. Uh, that's that's unfortunate for Haya because if one of those mines connect, you can really crush. But he's actually got an army that can fight here. Four goons. This is about even against each other right now. The goons with really good micro can definitely win it uh, because they one-shot Marines and they two-shot tanks. Okay, fifth goon coming out definitely makes a big difference as well. Haya continuing this push forward. He's going to lose his tank. He's trying to pick off what he can. Okay, picks off two goons, but loses five marines, two vultures, and a siege tank. Oh! Hey, getting some more value there. Oh! Oh, <laughs> just barely gets that mine. Uh, and he will slow the third base. You saw the probe coming down. It wanted to make a third, but he slows that, so that's kind of nice as well. Looking at Paralyze's base. He hasn't really lost workers, and that's one of the more important things, right? If he's continuing to make workers and keeping those going, that's good. Uh, looking over on the side of Haya shows us that Paralyze must have, uh, like, slouched on his workers for a moment because Haya has the same amount, and Haya should be just slightly lower since we saw him lose, like, two SCVs, I want to say. Or no, no, he, sorry, he lost one SCV, and then also uh, his command center was slightly slower, so... Slightly better production, <clears throat> excuse me, from Haya so far. Double uh, factory, and he's actually getting two add-ons very, very quickly here, which is interesting. I'm not sure why he wants two add-ons this fast, but sometimes, like, if you can't make a unit, you're just like, oh, I'll make my add-on now. It's pretty cheap. It's whatever. And sometimes you, there's actually, there are builds where you go two factory siege tank into, like, three more facts. Yeah, that might be it. That might be the plan is he might want to go like uh, make like five tanks and then add a bunch of factories and then just do like a two base. Could make sense. Reaver tech coming up. Not a big surprise here. Third base into Reaver. 
kind of the big standard right now in Protoss vs. Terran. SCV's coming out. Looks like he wants to make factories. You can see that money. 600, 300 is what you need for three facts. Notice where he's putting them. He's trying to block them from observer seeing. Unfortunately, this one health observer is going to literally fly in and see it immediately. This is going to trigger a bunch of gate ads. Uh, once you see this, you should go up to six gate, I think. Uh, now, you always go four. <clears throat> Excuse me. But realistically, like if you want to make sure you smash a build like this, Reavers and six gate is like you're really rolling in the units. It, you should not end up dying to something like this. Uh, the one thing you do want to think about is when you want to start your Citadel. So he's going to go immediately to the four. And again, like I mentioned, I think we'll see two added as his probe count catches up a little bit. Okay, nothing, nothing too exciting over here. Plus one is going to finish. He'll probably start plus one armor. Uh, and that probably will finish while it still matters. Because a lot of times, even these five factory pushes can just turn into, uh, you know, regular macro games eventually. Also, getting the two slow upgrades first. This is like 84 seconds this is 63. The other two upgrades are 50. So you just kind of, these are good ones to start early on because it takes so long for them to finish. And you want everything done <clears throat> as you're moving out. Or, uh, you know, just to get them utilized as quickly as possible. Uh, these are going to force vultures to spawn here. I don't think that's going to make a difference. I'm pretty sure that the vultures will spawn or whatever unit will spawn here now. Maybe the first one will get stuck if this SCV goes there. <laughs> but, uh, no biggie. Looking back here, there's the two more gates. So he is going up to six as his economy allows. Double reaver, speed shuttle. Second speed shuttle coming up. A pylon wall here against vultures. You can still do vulture harass here by moving the vultures into that position. Dragoon's coming on the map, and he does need that citadel. Okay, the citadel just got added. And in fact, he's even going to go heavier gates. And I actually do like this play. You can go uh, two gate reaver. I mean, uh, sorry. You can go three base reaver into gateway man. And that's very, very strong right now. And in fact, if you recognize that your opponent is doing that and you don't have a timing, you need to turtle hard and take a third base. Now, dude, every... Okay, he loses the shuttle. <laughs> he loses the shuttle. Every Protoss is, is just losing that shuttle immediately right now, except for Snow. <laughs> you, oh, man, that that's brutal. Because Paralyze is playing a beautiful game, but he just lost so much value there. But looking at the builds, okay, he actually did start his third command. So I think Haya has a good idea of what's going on. He's pushed out. He's taken this area. The threat has forced a ton of gateways. And even, it, it might not even be the threat. This might just be what Paralyze wanted to do. But by doing this, you kind of make them want to do this regardless. But yeah, if he just kind of turtles here in macros, this is going to turn into a completely normal game. We have the starport coming up. So he does want to go towards that plus two. Probably grab a second armory pretty soon as well. Throwing down some missile turrets. Yeah, getting ready. I think generally you do want to wall this with depots. Looking over at Paralyze, he's taking his fourth nexus in the center. Now, don't forget, if you have a ton of gateway units here, which is exactly what's happening, you get, you maintain that map control really, really well, right? And pushing across the map is very hard. So what I would like to see, because right now Haya is setting up a really beautiful defensive formation. Mines in front, missile turrets, anti-air in front, right? Good spread of siege tanks. He's starting to build some depots to clog areas up. You don't want to attack this. And some players will. Like, best makes a living off of attacking into positions like this. But what you really want to do here as Protoss is you want to get a big army and maybe do counterattacks, right? Sidestorm on the way, by the way. Uh, so if you're doing, like, counterattacks as opposed to trying to bust, like I said before, good spreads are very good against this type of style. But if he tries to walk out, either you get a good engage because he's walking out too fast, or he moves slow and you get into position you can counterattack. Now, this is three speed shuttles full of zealots. So that's 12 zealots ready to come from the sky. He is going to actually just attack in. So doesn't quite get that uh, shuttle, but the Goliath's going to help against the ground. Lots of vultures in here. And as the zealots go down, you're going to want to pull the dragoons back. So you see he's charging in here, just pure gateway man. Uh, and it's not working at all, right? So we had Paralyze with a huge amount of units he attacks in. 
Is this a noticeably different position for Haya? Not, not truly. That was definitely a poor move from Paralyze. And now we're on 58 SCVs, three base. He only has five factories still. So this is actually, this is helpful. Like if he had added three factories during this time, I think that he would be in a position where he might be able to win this game. Uh, and not that he's gonna lose, but like I'm talking like maybe more quickly because I feel like you could instantly bully this back and probably get up to here. Like if you can get up to about here, and then you just kind of lay mines in this area, you can start pushing into the, some of these other bases. So that was definitely not the greatest attack. We've already seen a lot of units from Paralyzed kind of being thrown away a little bit. 12 more Zealots in speed shuttles. <laughs> Another shuttle comes out. Maybe he'll he'll add some, uh, some high Templars to the mix. Lots of Dragoons coming down as well. Yeah, good gateway count. Second Robo coming up. Okay, so he's going to be producing a lot of observers and uh, speed shuttles. Definitely wants to stay on that style. Not surprised to see it. Speed shuttles flying in. This one's kind of in the front, so this could be a bit of an issue. Yeah, it's tanking those shots, so he's going to lose that with two Zealots still inside, unfortunately. Uh, we'll bomb out a lot of Zealots into the main base. I'm not sure what, the, what this is for exactly. Because... Oh, he actually accidentally targeted his academy there when he attack moved in. Um, because it's just sellouts, so it got cleaned up like really, really quickly. There was no economic damage done. It doesn't matter to lose just a handful of units. You you know you're diving th three speed shuttles in, and they don't really do much. Uh, fifth base coming up here for paralyze. Love this, by the way. Look at how hard this would be to get through. This is this is actually really, really smart, the amount of depots. So even if they get a lot of damage in your main, first off, you have more room for factories. Obviously, there's situations where you might lose some of these depots when you become supply block, but like I really like the idea. It just slows everything down immensely. Now, High is going to start moving out, and he definitely, like, the storms are going to be everything here for Paralyze. He needs the storms to do a good job. First one gets picked. Look at the micro. Dude, he picked three High Templars. That one should have gotten a storm off. It took two volleys, so he was slow on that. And now the speed's out. It's getting on top of Seed Shanks. More vultures coming out. He will be able to clean these vultures up. I mean, uh, these, these speed's all up. Now, unfortunately, he lost a lot of supply there. That engage, despite not getting the storms off, went pretty well for Paralyze. But Paralyze is low on units now as well. He doesn't have a huge, huge army. It's mostly Dragoons. You know, if you don't have a well-balanced Protoss army, sometimes Terran can just run through you. Uh, we have a couple Storms going on. Pretty good splitting overall, but this army seems to be a little bit small. The Dragoons going to move forward and start targeting down these Siege Tanks. And picks off a few. I think he backs up with good time there as well. Might be able to save that that High Templar also. Now, this is a tiny army to have in the center of the map. I'm getting a little bit nervous right now for uh, for Haya. This, this, seems, this seems like it's not going to go well, right? Like these small amounts of units. Paralyze has observers around the map. He has that double robo, right? He's chasing this. Like these tanks are in a lot of trouble now. He's trying to lay some mines. He's trying to make something happen here. Trying to make turrets in the center of the map, but just doesn't really have the unit count to support that, unfortunately. Paralyzed taking massive control of the game now. A couple tanks kind of randomly siege over here. Probably best to hide them over here for a moment and maybe push up there when Paralyze is not expecting it, perhaps. Yeah, another base trying to be started, but going to be canceled out immediately. He has his three add-ons. He has two one upgrades with plus three on the way, so that's pretty good. Meanwhile, over at uh, the base of Paralyze, he's getting more armor upgrades. Kadaren Amulet, he's at 2-1, not bad. More gates up here. Really, it's a good time to add another Nexus as well. Would like to see that. Like, you've you've bullied back, uh, you know, the army of Haya a couple times now. Maxed out. There's no reason not to start throwing down Nexuses. Unless you think you're just about to lose everything and you want to queue up every single gateway. Vultures running around, laying a few mines here. 
Yeah, he is getting ready for that fifth base location or sixth base location. Lots of speed shuttles. A lot of zealots inside them. In fact, only zealots inside of them. Dude, that's 18 zealots in, in the air right now. <laughs> All right, loses one shuttle really quickly. Loses the other one really quickly as well. Uh, gonna drop the rest on top of these siege tanks. And there's just too many units in the center. I think highest pushes don't make a lot of sense. I do feel like he misplayed here for sure. Now the vultures come down for a bit of a flank. And, uh, well, he starts picking off a lot of the Dragoons, which is kind of nice. But look at the supply for Haya. This is very unfortunate. He's on three base with 90, 100 supply. And he's playing against a, a five base Protoss. Like, three base versus five base, you only have a very small window to either attack or get a fourth up. And then they they just kind of overwhelm you. Like, I mean, we saw a lot of the moves that Paralyze made early on, and they weren't that good. But he just, he followed through with correct expansion timing. And Haya didn't follow through with a correct attack or correct expansion timing. And either one could have been, like, correct, right? Like, either one either one could end up working. Probably the attack did need those additional factors I was talking about because he was only on five when he did the really cost-efficient hold. So, yeah, it definitely um, definitely that's where, right? Because I, I feel like you look at this, and on the surface, it looks like, damn, Protoss is hard to beat. And, like, yeah, it is, it is, but... Uh, you know, Haya, I had like two options and he didn't do either of them particularly well. Well, didn't do one of them at all and the other one kind of didn't execute well. So it becomes an issue. Now he's setting up again. He's trying to get a fourth base. I think this is going to be the end of the game because he's going to lose another five tanks and like you just, you can't, you can't keep this up forever. It just does not work. Yeah, paralyzed killing everything he's gonna get the yeah that's gonna be a gg and uh that means paralyzed on to the winner's match so in the winner's match we have yoon our zerg player in the top left of citadel and in the bottom right we have paralyze our protoss player uh our two terran players will be playing in the losers match uh coming up next <clears throat> and we'll see i i mean i think that's uh, pretty high a favor but we'll talk about that when we get to it here between Yoon and Paralyze, I feel like, yeah, I've seen a fair amount of uh, Protoss vs. Zerg games on Citadel. It seems fine. The third gas is not that hard to get, it seems. There's not really great huge areas for high ground lurkers, right? There are some, but uh, I'm not sure. I, I I don't know exactly how this is going to look. I feel like I haven't casted many uh, Yoon uh, Zerg vs. Protoss games lately. I feel like it's been like at least a year in fact since i may have casted one of his games uh in this matchup so not exactly sure what type of style to expect coming out of him here paralyzed throws that uh pylon down looks like it's gonna be a uh gateway let's see and there it is so gonna go ahead start scouting with this probe it is cross spawn so he'll probably go like two zealot nexus and third zealot type of thing here it's an overpool uh, from from Yoon, so just keeping with that kind of safe opener. Overpool is, you know, kind of the, the thing that you do as Zerg that makes sure you don't die to anything. Maybe feeling confident in this group overall. I think I think he should, right? Like it it does feel like a group in which two players are a bit stronger than the other two by a larger margin than some of the other groups. Not to take away from Haya, although yeah, like Schwan Schwan, I I don't think he can make it out of here that would be amazing if he makes that loser bracket run and is able to do it so the probe coming down he will be able to find Yoon here in the top left and see that it is in fact a pool first build so probably the zealots won't really do much he'll sit at home right generally you put zealot probe here while you're making the nexus zealot down here to make sure the lings don't do anything and then another zealot pops out and then you can get your forge and everything and be fine that's if the lings come down there are four lings on the way Paralyzed sees that it's overpool. He's just checking how many lings actually pop. There's two, there's four. Not sure why his hell it was all the way back there. That's kind of funny. Like, <laughs> I'm not, it must have been a miss rally, right? I don't think a drone ran down and went into the main base and he had to chase it. Uh, maybe I missed that. 
It's possible. Anyways, uh, brings this up. You, you do need to block this. You don't want the links getting in your main. Uh, and he's actually counterattacking with that with that first sellout. So seems like that's the choice. Uh, oh, no. He's just kind of hiding in the center. So the links saw it, which should force some more links, but maybe it won't. Yeah, there it is. So four more links coming up because he walked this through the center of the map. Oh, man. The two links come up. So what happened here, I missed it, but the, basically the four links came up and targeted this probe. So he had to drill the probe away, which means two links got in. Now, are you actually going to gain any value with these two links? Hmm. Maybe, maybe not. Right? Like, w does this end up being worth it? I think there's a decent chance it will end up being worth it. And there's a, there is some small chance where you actually get a nice advantage off of it, right? You kill a couple probes with that and you're like, damn, I'm, I'm really doing well here. I don't think that'll happen here. I think Paralyze is good enough to block that. But we'll see. I'll try to keep an eye on that as well. See, so he'll come over and, like, target probes. He's like, okay, make that probe move. Notice how he didn't make it move. Paralyzed waiting to the last second. Doesn't want to lose mining time. And, of course, you have to manage these lings this entire time. So you get hit occasionally. Those areas is so much to do. See, this is such a nice thing about StarCraft. Like, you know, you have to go back, for instance, to send drones back. It, it's a big difference between this and StarCraft 2. In StarCraft 2, you could literally do everything on your keyboard while you wa while you micro these links, right? You could literally just sit here and do this. Not the case in Brood War. Like, you're going to have to screen switch. So you're, it's just harder to make these things occur, which it's more strategic in that way because you actually have to make the decision. Like, how much does it matter that I micro these links perfectly compared to get my drones to mine on time? Or do I sacrifice, you know, eight minerals by making it mine, you know, 13 seconds later or whatever because you know it's it's all these different choices that that stack up and you're always giving something to get something else which is why fast apm is good because you have to give up less if you can do more right it's just the beauty of brood war truly and not that starcraft 2 is it beautiful it is as well but uh yeah i love it okay so we're seeing uh, Hydralisk range. So this is going to be a range speedling all in. Notice how he does have speed. This is a popular build right now. I need to mention this cannon. He got this cannon nice and late. Look, the Stargate is basically finishing as the cannon is. So this is, he did a really good job optimizing his build. Now the build he's going up against, you generally make like five to six ranged hydras you send them across the map and you mass speed links so the ranged hydras pick off what you need picked off like the building really quickly if you open up the buildings and then get zerglings on top of everything with the hydras adding in that extra da damage it's very hard to hold it's a popular build right now i've seen it a lot recently but it doesn't it doesn't feel in the games that i've casted to be more successful than a regular three hatch hydra that has been my feeling, but I think because it's new, it probably is more successful. It's just, I'm not a Protoss player, I'm not a Zerg player, so I only see it in games I'm commentating, right? And it just happens not to have worked as well in those games. So here comes the push. Here's the first four, here's the two more, right? So six uh, has those feelings coming up. Paralyzed knows what's going on. Oh, there's actually even more Hydras coming up and Hydra speed. So. That's something the Corsair needs to see and needs to pay attention to. Now, the Corsair starts working on an Overlord there. The wall definitely going to get picked off. He might get enough cannons to hold. Let's see. It's going up to five. More Hydras coming from here. You know, again, this is, this is kind of extra tricky because normally it's not that many Hydras. It's more Speedlings, which would make the Zealots worth more. Oh, God, he cancels two cannons. Is that going to be the right play? I'm not entirely sure. He almost has legs, so if legs finish before a dive on the cannons, I think he's totally fine. Fairly certain that he'll be totally fine. Okay, a Zergling was sacked to see exactly what he's dealing with here. So he sees, okay, that was a canceled cannon. I killed the wall. Do I have enough to break this? And I think the answer is no with the legs done. Yeah, I think legs just finished. Doesn't seem like Yoon can do anything with this. Now, he's down 20 workers, but does have the three bases. He is adding hatcheries as well. Two more hatcheries coming up. Layer coming up as well. Corsair. Ooh, careful there. A lot of damage being put out. Still just kind of standing. A little bit of a containment here. 
Paralyze is going to wait maybe for a couple more units and then push this all out. In fact, we can see that he's making a Dark Templar. So this is the timing, basically. When these two Zealots pop out and he has a Dark Templar coming, you push everything back and you slip the DT out, and then you see if you can get some damage done with that as well. Three more cannons get started. Now, his his uh, Corsair saw more Hydras popping out, and he starts three more cannons. I'm interested in this because I thought he was going to be okay, but I guess with more Hydras coming, he's a little bit nervous about it. We'll see if he was right to be. Oh, man, if all three cannons finish, there's no way this attack does anything, right? I don't think so. I definitely don't think so. Dude, that is 12 speed zealots. They're going to have plus one relatively soon. Dragoon range on the way. Psy Storm on the way. Is there going to be a Spire put up? Corsair is still doing a great job scouting. That's something we really have to commend Paralyze for. I feel like he's been on top of everything this game as far as uh, what's going on. Right? Like, he keeps checking. There's no Spire. Okay, we can go heavier ground. Oh, there's more Hydras being made. Okay, add cannons. Then he swoops by again. He's like, oh, he stopped Hydras. He's back into drones. Cancel a cannon. Anyways, right now, the Zealots poke out. They try to see what's there. That is a little bit much for 12. He has those High Templars, though, and as Storm finishes, maybe they can uh, utilize a Storm here to help push through. He did make this DT. He's holding it back. He wants to uh, make sure that the DT gets out unseen. You don't want to show that up at the front. Robo on the way for anti-lurker. Maybe even for shuttle as well. Kind of a somewhat passive game. A somewhat passive game. Lurker's being made. The thing is, I feel like both of them have been doing good counterplay to each other the entire time. So like there's, a, there's like a war of, of builds going on right now. Now he runs out with these Zealots. Gonna need those side storms to help out. Doing a pretty good job. Don't forget the lurkers are gonna un, uh, are gonna finish pretty soon here. Throw some more storms out. Oh, 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 oh. Do you storm that? I think you do. Okay, gets rid of that one. This one comes up. That's gonna be annoying, but you know what? He pushed everything back pretty well. A couple lurker eggs morph on the very hurt hydras. Chooses not to try to kill those eggs. Instead, gonna continue to push forward against these hydras. Time for the uh, Dark Templar to get out. There is a shuttle on the way. So maybe we're going to see a storm drop. Maybe we're going to see a DT drop. Not entirely sure about that yet. Oh, it is going to be a DT drop to the main. Look at that. Very, very sneaky. Nothing over here. There's, in fact, look, there's no Zerg vision in a huge swath of area. So he, I don't think he knows about the shuttle at all. Now the Zalts are turning around to push the Hydras back so that his shuttle can make a quicker line to his opponent. Now, does he see that? Does he see that? Just barely not. Barely not. There is no defense here. None whatsoever. Good amount of Dragoons. Observers popping out now. That DT drop might make all the difference. If Yoon does not realize this, he might lose all these drones, and that's game. If he loses all those drones, there's almost no chance. Okay, throws a big storm down. A really fantastic storm there. The DT goes in. We'll just keep that selected for a moment. Uh, as it starts to pick up kills, we don't see anything running while he's breaking out, right? He's attacking at the exact same time that he's hitting the mineral patches. This is fantastic play. He's keeping the attention of Yoon down here. Of course, he doesn't get an audio cue for this as well. Dude, this DT absolutely crushing. More units running in from Yoon. He's going to figure out in a second here. Yeah, he knows now. He lost all his drones in his main. He's losing all of his lurkers. GG Paralyze advances with a dominating display of skill here uh, in the winner's match. So Paralyze moves up. We're going on to the loser match now. It's going to be Schwan Schwan going up against Haya in a TVT. Could end up being a long one. We'll see about that. Let's get right into it in the bottom left of Citadel. We have Haya. In the bottom right, we have Schwan Schwan. And let's see how this is gonna look. TVT on Citadel can be a little bit crazy. I haven't seen a ton of pro Terran versus Terrans in my own games. There are a lot of different routes that you can take. There's some really interesting containment positions, but also a lot of terrain you can fly over with drop ships that, that you can't really head off too, too easily. So. Not entirely sure what we'll end up seeing. Will anyone take the risk of a very fast expansion? It's hard to say. 
you know, there's always the possibility of something like an eight barracks. There's there's one base builds. There is a little bit of rock, paper, scissors in the beginning of a Terran versus Terran. So we'll wait and see if any of that uh, comes true. Of course, the winner of this will play against Yoon in the final uh, set of the group to see who moves on. And I mean, you know, it's a best of one TVC. So whoever moves on, there is always that possibility you get some sort of bunker rush off or something, pick up that win against a very strong player. But I get ahead of myself. Uh, you know, while we uh, kind of wait for this pickup, I want to, uh, you know, tell you guys, thank you very much for, for supporting. I hope that you are enjoying CNSL. The feedback has been pretty good. Uh, it's kind of funny. The uh, Overall, the viewership is actually much worse than the regular cast that I upload, uh, which is kind of an interesting thing because I feel like, for me personally, I'm having such a blast doing this. Uh, I love tournaments like this. I love tournaments that are like really strong players, but not necessarily the best as well. Like obviously ASL is like the best content that there is, but a tournament like this, I like almost as much. I love seeing a, a lot of the times, you know, they'll make one small mistake or something like, and you'll, you'll look at it and you say, wow, I'm actually learning more from this than like a pro game where there's even more mind games involved and like almost every decision's correct. I, I don't know. Not that that's always the case in the pro games either. But yeah, anyways, hope that you guys are are loving the CNSL as much as me, which is probably impossible. So sorry to expect too much of you. So anyways, it looks like probably a factory expand on both sides. We'll see as they make those factories up. Sean Sean getting his going now. So about the same time factories. SCV from Sean Sean coming in. He did get the first scout, which is kind of nice. I am not getting it. He will go cross spawn scout, I think, because you can tell that was a 13 scout that hit him so you know where it came from it's a kind of a nice thing about Terran versus Terran uh you know it, the thing is there are different scout times you scout on 12 generally if you're going for a fast expansion you scout on 13 with a factory expansion most of the time but you can actually scout as late as 15 as well which is kind of like a a funny build where you just like you really super optimize you say I don't care what they're doing literally I don't care because my build can deal with everything but yeah, they're both doing it very, very normal here. Aya gets in, sees the factory, sees the lack of gas mining. Got to know that a command center 99% on the way. Oh, so he pushed out Schwan Schwan's SCV. Haya with his Marines going in the wrong direction. They're looking for this SCV, but the SCV went in a different direction. He's going to get into the main base. When he sees two factory, Haya's in a bit of trouble. He's in a bit of trouble there, isn't he? Okay, so when you see two factory, no add-on, the best, if you have two Marines, let's see, how many Marines does he actually have? He has one Marine. So, hmm, that actually does become a little bit more tricky. You probably do need to make the de the bunker still, but this this could get slightly tricky. So basically, if, if you see this and you did this, if you have two Marines in a bunker, you crush it. One Marine in a bunker is a little bit more tricky. Now, Schwan Schwan brings up SCVs. His plan here is to make vultures nonstop and utilize the long travel distance to offset the fact that his opponent has a second factory quicker. You're gonna have to also go armory with this. He's going armory here. Haya, no armory. So Haya is just doing the vultures. He may just expand behind this. He has a shocking amount of gas for not going armory. Schwan Schwan's build is actually better optimized than than Haya's in some ways. Like this is it, it this is a good way to play. Like if you skip the bunker, but it can go wrong because they do have more vultures than you. You have to nail your repairs. So he targets the marine right away and then targets down the vulture. Eight vulture shots kills a vulture. So you can see he's starting to get out of hand with this because he has that marine attack as well. So four vultures was the perfect attack timing. And suddenly we have a very dead Schwan Schwan. This is why the bunker can be very, very important. That was basically perfectly engaged by Haya. It was, yeah, the Marines outdid the damage. Their damage outdid the repair of the SCVs. So that was that was beautifully executed. Uh, and that means Schwan Schwan uh, is eliminated. So we go on to the final match now. It's going to be Haya going up against Yoon. Uh, and of course the winner goes to the round of 16 alongside paralyzed Schwan Schwan. Of course, we just saw eliminated, uh, a tough one, but really well executed there by Haya. 
and here we go. Uh, in the top middle spawn here of Apocalypse, our three-player map, we have Haya, and on this left-hand side, we have Yoon. So, uh, yeah, Haya versus Yoon. Who knows? Anything can happen. Anything can happen. It's a best of one. Uh, obviously, we've seen some great plays from both sides. Uh, you know, Paralyze, I guess, just doing a bit better overall in this group with that DT draw plus attack at the same time against Yoon, doing fantastically and getting him into that round of 16. And now we wait to see what type of builds we're going to have. I, uh, looks like he's just going to wall. Yeah, Depot goes down and he'll make a barracks here. And, you know, it's not a perfect wall, but guys, walling is so good in Terran versus Zerg. It's, I, I was thinking about this some earlier today, actually. Uh, when, so when you see a wall like this, the problem with this Depot is Mutas can kill it super, super easy, right? If they want to, they can kill it easy. But it's better to trade losing this depot sometime after six minutes with having to make a bunker in the first three to four minutes. It's a huge difference. The wall, basically what it does is just say, I don't need a bunker. And if you can skip that bunker, the rest of your build is so much better optimized. Also, even though the mutas can kill this later, sometimes you can stall them out, but they have to focus it for a while, right? That has over that has like 10 SCVs of health if you count in the, the armor, right? So like that would be a lot of damage that would be put elsewhere. So it, like losing it is not the end of the world. And they had to, because their mutas spent so much time there, that's less time that they spent other places like killing turrets, killing SCVs, killing Marines. Although sometimes they do that while attacking the bunker as well. I mean the depot as well. Anyways, just kind of a interesting thing I wanted to bring up. Notice Yoon this time against Haya gives a, a bit of respect there and goes hatchery first. No overpool this time. Overpool, not a particularly great build against Terran anyways. Uh, you know, it's just, it's, it does do well against the eight Raxes, but, and I mean, for that reason, it should be used sometimes anyways. Um, it's just, it, you know, those eight Raxes, they are, they are coin flips a lot of the time. You know, if you go in the center of the racks, like double eight barracks, if he had done it this time, he probably wins the game. But if his opponent nine pulls, he loses the game, right? It's it's very yes, no. <laughs> There's not, there is some play. Games can be won against it. Games can be lost with the nine pool against it. It can happen. It's just, it's very, very rare. Some of these, you know, when you have cheesy builds like that, they hard counter each other very, very much. Now, high is coming up. And it looks like he wants to do a little bit of pressure, but the travel distance for these Marines, it's just three player maps have a very long travel distance. This is one of the things, right? Four player maps is generally pretty standardized and like a far travel distance would be like 32 seconds. Uh, obviously it's longer cross spawn on a map like that. Like Radeon is like 32 seconds vertically. Uh, and then the thing is a three player map is, is gonna be probably even more than that. It might be 33, 34 seconds travel time so you can't really get down there and put the pressure on with those with those marines uh if you did a regular expansion like this whereas if it's a smaller map let's say we're on fighting spirit like you can probably get over there you know poke make the drones run then turn around go home and be fine map sizes map distances make so much of a difference the higher level you get now he does have a few marines out on the map the SCV has been kept alive very well through micro, so he saw exactly how many uh, Zerglings were made. He was looking to see if maybe, you know, if Yoon stops making them and he doesn't realize how many uh, Marines are out. Let's say you only have four here, and then he attacks with four Marines. That's some damage. That's some damage. Here he has six, just kind of roaming the center. He's going to have to move back because he doesn't know if Yoon is going for any more here as well. Yoon has that uh, Spire going up. Taking a look at the build here. So this was a one Rax Academy Rush. Not too surprised to see a build like that. Uh, this was a hatchery first, so you could have gone two Rax, but one Rax Academy Rush is maybe the most safe feeling build that you have. You get the very quick commsats, very quick stim, very quick medics. You're completely safe with a wall. So, uh, yeah, Haya's going to be feeling pretty good about this. Does need to get his uh, engineering base started now. He can't wait any longer on that thing. There it is. That's a funny location for it. Maybe just because you want to build it fast, but, like, that actually could be hard to defend. If, if Zerg really wanted to get it, they could get it. Like, if Yoon goes all in Muta, he actually will kill this. And then it's like, 
He killed what makes turrets, which you need against mutas, so that could be a problem. Generally, you tuck this either with the barracks or, like, off to the side somewhere where, like, the turrets in your main will defend it. Like, the ones that are defending your minerals also defend your eBay. That type of location is generally where you see the engineering bay. Because losing upgrade buildings is tough. Okay, a fireback kind of holding uh, the holding everything down here. Second fireback comes out, but actually takes a few hits before turning around to fire. So uh, the lings kill the first two firebats, which were made as anti-ling. That's frustrating. Muta's flying out. Haya might catch these. Oh my god, the mutas fly right into the marines. In the meantime, the zerglings are being annoying. We don't have any missile turrets up. He is making one up at the top. Okay, finally gets that one up. The lings actually getting damage. Mutas have to hold this off, though. This is a problem. This is a problem right now. He has four more mutas being made. Okay, it looks like he should be able to just hold this as those other mutas pop. Only a handful of marines left over. So the muta's going to clean. Oh, my God. That almost killed that final muta. That was getting pretty close. Going to get rid of those medics as well. Third base. A little bit of a hidden position over to the side. Has his mutas out. Healthy drone count. And actually, the SCV count for Haya, not fantastic. When you start building your turrets, you really want to have like 32-ish. So he's a little bit down. Part of that is those Zerglings that ran in and did their harassment. I like this bunker. That's a really well-placed bunker. I like that very, very much. Uh, he is making some turrets here. Needs to get those up ASAP. The harassment starts with those seven mutas. One is very low from that attack before, though, so it has to be careful about that. Plus one still coming up. Adding that third Rax. Okay, I like it. I don't know if he got range, actually. I think he did. I think he did. He's very low on Marines. I'm actually a bit worried here for Haya. Ooh, that's actually really well-placed turrets. Very well-placed. Oh, I like that a lot, but this could become an issue. Plus one. That did get started uh, pretty quickly, so he's doing a good job with that. Hydralisk Den is up. Okay, so this looks to me like it's probably just going to be heavy, heavy mutilus harassment into run lurkers up. So basically, if you just... And this... There's some problems with Haya's play here, unfortunately, right? Like, he did that move out. It didn't really do that much. His factory is starting almost a minute late. Like, you really need that earlier. And he's going to have to go siege tanks. If he goes to Starport after that, this game is not going to go his way. Uh, because the Lurkers are going to get up here really, really quickly. And he's going to have to push them back with siege tanks. The Marines will not be able to do it. Now, a little bit of harassment there. Kills off a missile turret. SCV count still not super healthy. Yoon doing a good job. Has a good, solid group of 10 mutas here. Picking off Marines and Medics. Yeah, coming back for more harass. I having a very hard time holding on against this. More mutas. He sees this group out here. If he kills this group... Dude, I feel like Haya is just really far behind. You know, he is a great player. He had some great results in, in Pro League and stuff way back in the day, like 2008, 2009. Uh, but... Like, what we're watching here, like, Yoon really feels like he's a level up. He really does. This is a smart move. I like this move a lot, but it's going to get caught. Haya, just, he doesn't have a very good worker count. His tech is late. He doesn't have a big army, right? So he's behind in every way. The only good thing is the plus one attack. Like, okay, he's got plus one range stim. Okay, good stuff. But kind of every build has that by now. Right now, Yoon... Has some lings out there. A lot of mutas. Full group here. A few more on the side. Lurkers being morphed. Lurkers being morphed. Lings being made. It's just such a small army. And he needs to do so much with it. He needs to keep Yoon completely back. All right. Yoon continuing to whittle things down. Up come the lurkers. Let's see what this engage looks like. Uh, that's a lot of lings getting on top of this as well. Yoon turning, killing the Marines off. And, dude, Haya is so far behind here that he actually just GG's. So that's going to end the group right there. And that means that, as uh, anticipated, Yoon and Paralyze 
will be moving on. Tron, Tron, and Haya, unfortunately, definitely outclassed today. Guys, I hope you enjoyed Group D. Probably the most one-sided group that we're going to see in the whole tournament. Uh, but it is what it is. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.